Life Audio. Welcome to the Crosswalk Devotional. This is Dr. Michael A. Milton with a devotional from Ephesians chapter 5. This is the second in a series called Walk This Way. Today's devotional is entitled Walk in Light. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Miracles are everywhere. Let our adventure begin! Discover Pure Flix, your premium streaming service where faith and family values come home. Ready to have some fun? The most exclusive selection of quality, wholesome movies and series that will uplift your spirit. A man can argue whether God exists, but when he looks at his daughters, he knows. With new arrivals every week. Unbelievable. Save big and enjoy the possibilities, like invitations to exclusive theatrical screenings. I see it, so I believe it. Find out more by joining today at pureflix.com iHeartRadio is a proud sponsor of the 31st Philadelphia Film Festival, taking place October 19th through October 30th. For 12 days, the film festival will host screenings of The Banshees of Inishirin, Glass Onion, and Knives Out Mystery, The Whale, and Weird, The Al Yankovic Story, along with over 130 films from across the globe and around the corner, Q&As with filmmakers and Hollywood guests, and nightly events. Tickets are now on sale. For more information and to see the full film lineup, go to filmadelphia.org backslash festival. This is devotional number two in the series, Walk This Way. This devotional is entitled, Walk in Light. Written and read by Dr. Michael A. Milton. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. And now intercepting the passage at chapter 5, Verse 7. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord will endure forever. It hardly needs saying that one of the most remarkable and necessary features of life is light. The artists like Monet and Van Gogh and even J.M.W. Turner and Constable, remind us how beautiful light is as it's painted, dappled through the forest, or the reflected, softer light of the moon, painted over the navy blue of a bay. We know how important light is when we lose it. Lose your electricity and we scramble for the flashlight, the lanterns, and the candles. Because let's face it, we need light. In Ephesians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul uses the metaphor of light, which, by the way, is extraordinarily popular in the Bible. The word phos in the Greek, or 
in the Hebrew is an amazing word. Even Jesus said, I am the light of the world. God is light. In chapter 1, verse 4 of Genesis, God made the light, and it was good. The Apostle Paul tells us that we are to be imitators of Christ. In chapter 5, verse 1, he goes on to explain how, how we can do that. It's the way we walk. He explained that we have to walk in love, to walk in unity and love with each other. And then he transitions, and in verse 8 of chapter 5 of Ephesians, he says that we are to walk in the light, not in the darkness. He contrasts the light and the darkness in a way that helps us understand how we should walk. That is, how we should follow the Lord Jesus Christ and live our lives. To be imitators of Christ is, in a sense, to take on the reflected light of the one who is the light of the world, just as the light of the moon is expressed with soft strokes across the water and becomes like dazzling diamonds. So too, as we follow the Lord Jesus Christ and seek to imitate him in light, so too, the brilliance of Jesus Christ shines through us. There's a few things that we should remember about walking in the light. First of all, the light reveals what the darkness conceals. The world was in darkness when Jesus Christ came. In fact, Isaiah in that classic verse says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, a light to the Gentiles. A light was going to come, and that light was Jesus Christ. The darkness of the world reflects the scriptures that we read. Much of darkness is associated in the Bible with sexuality that is separate from God's will, opposed to God's will. The sexuality that is perverse, aberrant, and ends up hurting human beings. It is dark. But to be light is to walk in such a way that we follow the Lord Jesus Christ. He brings light to every part of our lives, including human sexuality. There's a lot of talk these days about that, from gender and identity to changing one's gender, which, of course, can't be done. You can't change the DNA structure that God has placed in you. You are what God made you to be. But in the foolishness of sin and rebellion against God, this is only one of many other departures from truth that brings about pain. Adultery, polygamy, desires that take us away from God are all done in the darkness. The Apostle Paul says that we are to walk in the light. That which cannot even be spoken 
is done in the darkness. And we are told to turn away from that. To have Jesus, to follow Jesus, to live by the commands of his gospel, commands that emanate from a heart of gratitude, is to allow light to not only dapple through the forest of humanity, but to shine brilliantly. There's another thing about light. Light brings security, while dark brings danger, because evil can be perpetrated in the darkness when no one sees. The light exposes the darkness, Paul writes, shows it for what it is. When we walk in the light, we walk in safety, in security. And though the whole world may fall into darkness, believer, you must walk in the light. For to do so is not only to know God, but to be able to share him with others and to rescue others who have no light. That in and of itself was the primary objective of the early church going to the ends of the earth. Mark to Egypt, Thomas to India, and so forth, to bring light to darkness, dark deeds, dark that concealed evil and inculcated danger, violence, ungodliness of every kind. Now, how do we receive this light? We receive the light by faith. It's not our light, you see. It's not our good works. It is Jesus Christ in us. It is, like the moon, a reflective light. To repent and to receive Jesus Christ by faith is to welcome a veritable flood of golden buttercream light into your life. And those who are around you will benefit as well from that light. Though the world walk in darkness, God is calling you and me to follow him. And to follow him is to receive his light. The light that brings purity, holiness, and ultimately the light of life and eternal life. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At the intersection of faith and life, we live in a culture that extols darkness. Darkness that covers evil. And to shine a light is to risk upsetting those who prefer the darkness. The way that we are called to walk is to walk in the light in such a way as we share that light with others. I've never known anyone who received Christ, who was saved, to say, I remain offended that my neighbor shared the gospel with me. That was such an offense. Of course, they would never say that. They would be eternally grateful for the one who shared the light of the world, Jesus Christ, with them. And in a similar way, we must remember that to walk in the light is to carry the light with us wherever we go. A candle that is always burning, always burning brightly. Now, just like we wouldn't shine the light into someone's eyes or use the light as if it were a laser, in a similar way, we are not to be offensive with light. We're just to let light do its own work. It warms 
it brightens, it comforts, it brings security. To follow the Lord Jesus Christ openly, lovingly, graciously, is to let your light shine. And those who receive that light, a light that dispels a darkness that they have known, will cause them to be eternally grateful. Some will be saved. Some will recede back into the darkness. That decision is not ours. Ours is simply to be faithful and to walk in the light. Further reading. I am the light of the world. An article by John Piper on DesiringGod.com O-R-G. A commentary on John chapter 8 by Matthew Henry, which can be found at BibleStudyTools.com. Finally, I would recommend the article The Light of the World by Burke Parsons at TableTalkMagazine.com. The Crosswalk Devotional is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Miracles are everywhere. Let our adventure begin! Discover Pure Flix, your premium streaming service where faith and family values come home. Ready to have some fun? The most exclusive selection of quality, wholesome movies and series that will uplift your spirit. A man can argue whether God exists, but when he looks at his daughters, he knows. With new arrivals every week. Unbelievable. Save big and enjoy the possibilities, like invitations to exclusive theatrical screenings. I see it, so I believe it. Find out more by joining today at pureflix.com iHeartRadio is a proud sponsor of the 31st Philadelphia Film Festival, taking place October 19th through October 30th. For 12 days, the film festival will host screenings of The Banshees of Inishirin, Glass Onion, and Knives Out Mystery, The Whale, and Weird, The Al Yankovic Story, along with over 130 films from across the globe and around the corner, Q&As with filmmakers and Hollywood guests, and nightly events. Tickets are now on sale. For more information and to see the full film lineup, go to filmadelphia.org backslash festival.